And shall we pray? I know I've already prayed this morning, but let's pray again. Well, we just want to thank you and, and trust the meeting back into your hands and and the message, Lord. We pray for your word this morning that it would come forth as God breathed and not not man breathed. Lord, that you'd give me exactly what to say, when to say, how to say. We want to acknowledge this day that we celebrate the resurrection of Messiah, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. But if we died with Christ, we have faith that we also live with him. Lord, I thank you for that preceding necessary death that begins the resurrection journey. And Lord, I want to praise you for that, Lord, over my own life and everyone's life here, Father. What a, what a precious reality that is. Well, we bless this time. We bless the hearers. And Lord, I pray, particularly this morning, for a spirit of revelation to come upon hearts today. Lord, this is my cry this morning, that a spirit of revelation would would fill this room, fill this house, fill these hearts, Lord, fill the hearer, Lord, of the message today. We bless you and praise you. Amen. Awesome. Well, I sat down after dinner last night um, in my room and started writing out the message. And I just started writing. Before I know it, I had four pages of, of thoughts that I've just put onto paper. And I'm just going to start reading some of the things that I wrote. So the the message really, if I'm going to put a title on the message, it's it's revelation or reason. Revelation or reason. So I started started writing this, and I'm just going to read it as I wrote it. You were not created in the image of Almighty God and given this such a great salvation and the eternal gospel of his Son to sit politely in a chair once a week on a Sunday to look at the back of the head of another created person and listen to a message for an hour and then die of old age. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? You are not created. I'm going to emphasize this part here in the image of almighty God just get that in your mind straight away get the image of almighty God in the forefront of your thinking you were created in the image of almighty God that's huge (laughs) come on man You were created in the image of Almighty God and given a salvation and the eternal gospel of His Son, the eternal good news of His Son, for a purpose. And it wasn't to sit on a chair once a week on a Sunday. Is that okay? That is not the reason you were created in God's image. You were created in the image of Almighty, Everlasting Father, Wonderful Counselor, El Elyon, God Most High. 
God above all gods. You were created in his image. So let's get perspective. So Sunday believerism, Sunday creedalism, that just means I agree with the message. I get around a group of people that agree and believe on the same topics. There's a harmony. There's, a, there's a, an agreement between everybody in the room of the general direction that the ministry is going in and what they teach and preach. Yeah? And yet you can have all that and go to hell. You can believe in a creed and not know Jesus Christ. You can believe in doctrine. You can believe and even like and celebrate the things that I'm saying. And furthermore, they can benefit you. You can take what you're hearing and start to live your life by them and receive benefit from those things and go to hell. So you need the revelation, the awakening by the Spirit of Christ in your spirit for salvation. He needs to reveal himself to you. So Sunday believerism, sitting on chairs once a week, is not biblical Christianity. <gasps> Well, what is this then? <laughs> Why do we meet? Have I asked myself that question? Why do we meet? I'm not going to answer it. I'm just going to ask it. Maybe we'll come to an answer towards the end. But in Christ, those who are saved live and move and have their being in all his sufficiency, all that he provides. So everything comes from him. I know these are basic statements, but everything about your faith now informs you, matures you, grows you, prepares you, sets you up for the end of the age. It's to bring you into a conformity and into the image of the Son. Romans 8.29 Romans 8, we've all read Romans 8 at various times and ways and heard it preached a thousand different ways. But it's such a central and such a core pillar of of Christian doctrine. You are either contributing to the kingdom of God or you are hindering. And I've shared this before that if there's one theme that I can take away since we started Fireplace in 2014 it's recognizing the offense of Christ, the gospel message. It polarizes. It, it reveals a paradox, extremes. It's either all in or all out. There's no passively sitting on a fence observing Christianity. You can't sit on the sideline of the faith and passively observe. It's, it's an all-in proposition. Or all out. And this is the greatest conflict since the beginning of the age. When, when man fell, 
there were two things. There was revelation and reason. What I mean by when I say reason, like man's wisdom, man's logic, man's intellect. What was on offer in the garden by Satan to man? And knowledge. A tree. There's two trees, right? Two trees in the kingdom. One tree gave you life. Yeah, if you ate of that, it was the tree of life, right? And what was the other tree? Death. <laughs> it was life or death. It's two men. There are two men that we're either in or out of. It's either Adam or it's Christ. Two kingdoms. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of men. So this age-old conflict of reason and revelation... And this is the great struggle. And it's probably a good idea to go back. And I was talking with the guys yesterday, John and Andrew, and we're, I guess, talking about basic things. It's quite funny how things come back to basics once again. Of salvation. How saved are we? You're saved to the measure that you are either contributing to the kingdom or robbing. You're either giving or you're stealing. Is that okay? Again, remember what we said at the beginning? The rule is, this is the rule of God. This is the rule of God's universal order. It's either all in or all out. It's either hindering or it's contributing it's either robbing or it's giving there's no passive fence sitting and that's why fireplace has been such an offense and such an upsetting place for many people and all of us we've all had to go through it if anybody that spent any time here you will have to reckon some of these biblical realities the truth of, of who Jesus Christ is he didn't come to bring peace he came to bring a sword but yet he is the prince of peace yes. what? <laughs> if you're scratching your head like I am it's normal, that's okay <laughs> when Jesus came he revealed the righteousness of God. His appearing brought the righteousness of God. So everything that Jesus did was right. When he says to Peter, get behind me, Satan, that is right. When Lazarus' sister says, aren't you going to spare him, go and see him, pray for him, and he leaves him for another two days to stink a little bit more. We, you and I wouldn't do that. We would be rushing off there to get an ambulance to go get a doctor. Yet what Jesus did was utterly perfect. It was right. It was love. It says in the next phrase, in John chapter 11, it says, and Jesus loved him. That was Jesus' love to leave him another two days. To let him properly die. Can you do that? Can you let your friends and family properly go through a death experience in their own relationships, family, health, and recognize that as love? That's the offense. It's, it's a paradox. 
and to the degree that we allow our human intellect and reason to come in is the degree that we now hinder the kingdom. We hinder God's work. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who don't believe. So here we are on a Sunday talking about the cross of Jesus Christ and it's a foolishness if you don't believe Jesus. But if you've been saved, you love the cross. And you don't love it out of your own natural um, knowledge or understanding of the doctrine of salvation. You can't. It's impossible. You have to be transformed inwardly. You need revelation. Before I got saved, I, I had heard about the cross. I'd been to church. I'd witnessed and seen things. Even I had a grace on my life to see things in the supernatural realm. I could see demons. I could see the angelic order. I would have visions. I would have dreams. My spirit man was already awakened in some sense to the supernatural. But I wasn't converted. I wasn't saved. But when... Jesus came into my life in July 1999 suddenly everything made sense the supernatural made sense it didn't necessarily enhance it but what it did it it gave me a love for Jesus Christ and his word You can't have a love for him and you can't have a love for his word unless he comes in by revelation. Reason will get you some of the way. Think of the Pharisee. Let's go there. Luke Luke chapter 18, verse 11. I love how this, this verse starts. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you, I'm not like other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like the tax collector. I want you to just underline in your own heart the first part of that verse. The Pharisee stood by himself himself herself it's the problem of self you're alone that kind of thinking separates you from God it's not revelation it's reason you can live like a Pharisee and he was living a higher moral level than everybody else around him. You can abstain from drinking and foul language, dirty jokes. You can abstain from sex before marriage. You can abstain from every other sin under the sun in your own strength you can have a knowledge of God a knowledge about the law and even live in a higher moral sphere or plane above others around you based on your own strength on your own ability on on your own knowledge that you've acquired there is a knowledge that gives you power. I remember hearing this phrase years ago when I was a kid. Knowledge is power. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Knowledge is power. Do you believe it? Yes. 
Knowledge is power. That's the great temptation. That's what tempted Eve in the garden. A gnosis, a knowledge apart from God. So this is the temptation, isn't it? In the garden, the temptation alternative to revelation was reason. And that's the temptation that we're faced with every day. Rational thinking, logic, sentimentality, the media, what my friends think, what my parents think, what my children think, what my neighbours think, what my church friends think. I'm tempted every day to employ logic and reason. But in the end, it is death. Remember the two trees in the garden. We often don't think about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as the tree of death. It is death. It kills. It might not kill the body straight away, but it kills the spirit. It kills the spirit of revelation. In fact, when they ate of that tree, what happened? They were cast out of the garden and the tree was then blocked from access. <clears throat> Great pictures, isn't it? Great pictures that we've got. If we can take these realities to our heart and go, life isn't that difficult when you boil it down to, am I operating in revelation or am I operating in reason? There's a lot of people that have come to faith by hearing an anointed message. And then there's others that have come into faith by being hemmed in. Through being closed up by crisis or suffering, shut out. I know my own life, I have had a friend of mine who had a shocking accident and broke his back and his, his sportsmanship mode or way of living was, was ruined forever. He was in the spinal unit. Um, I had broken up with my girlfriend who had been a fiancé. My life was falling apart around me and I was coming to a place of crisis. And that's where God hemmed me in, so to speak. I came to Australia looking for a job and, and doors started closing. I got saved in crisis. I cried out. I cried out looking for God. I knew something was happening. I could sense God was, God was near and all I had to do was cry out with a true heart, Jesus help, have mercy. And it came in the middle of crisis and it was ministered to me through my brother, my younger brother Tim, who through the foolishness of preaching the Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ, gave me a verse out of Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. And at that moment, the revelation came into my spirit that I had no strength. All my strength and all my pride were now broken. 
self-sufficiency is broken. And that's the quickening revelation of Jesus Christ that's needed in every believer at some point. And I've seen many people since, from that moment and on, who heard nice messages from church pastors, an anointed message, and feel a sense of being compelled to come up the front and make a decision for Jesus, but more drawn by possibly a little bit of crisis in their lives, maybe just the anointing that was on the house, but no real revelation, no transformation in their lives. They would come in, make a decision for Jesus, maybe come back the following week, but then disappear again. There was no conversion. There was no depth or cry and a recognition of what Jesus has done for them. I tell you, we've got a I was just sharing again yesterday, and I've said this before, until, and it, these are big words, but we need, to, we need to come to maturity, right? <laughs> Understand some of these theological terms, but Christology is the study of who Jesus is. Until your Christology, your Christology, is really revealed to you, and you understand who Jesus is, your idea of salvation will suffer. Your walk will suffer. You need to have a good foundation of what Jesus has done. That he is the penal substitute for your sin. I know this sounds like basic stuff, but it's Easter, isn't it? Has Jesus died for my sin? Do I really believe that? If I really believe that, then my life should be transformed and changed. What Jesus did for me when I got saved, he revealed the letter of death. There's nothing good in you, Chris. You are dead. And again, that's the offense of the gospel. Jesus came to tell the whole world that you can't do it. You're dead. You're going to hell. There's nothing, there's no sufficiency within you to save yourself. You need me. I am the only one that can save you. He reveals your true condition. But if you haven't had that, if you haven't had that confrontation of, wow, you really are going to hell you really are sick <laughs> you are far from God then my question is how saved are you and that's the offense isn't it the gospel of Jesus Christ is exclusive it's all Jesus you can only come to the Father by Jesus. There's no other way. And that's the message, really, of what Easter is, isn't it? You know, we heard this morning from Cheryl that there's a bakery that refuses to celebrate Easter and takes the cross off an Easter bun. I mean, that's just absurd. But you can deny all you like. The reality is, is that Jesus was brought forth to reveal that you can't do it. None of us can. go to Second Timothy and I'll close out with, with a few thoughts around some verses here in Timothy. Yes. 
So 2 Timothy chapter 1. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This, this passage of verses is so deep, is so rich. God saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ before time began. This predates time. Which begs another question about people in the Old Testament. How saved were they? Well, there's always been a remnant chosen according to the election of grace. So people were saved in the Old Testament. So when Jesus was made manifest, when he came to this earth, all those people had now real meaning. Now, yes, they died in the Lord, but now their salvation has been made real. It's now revealed. Jesus has come forth through Mary, through the virgin birth, and now every dead saint up to that point now is celebrating Their salvation is now made manifest. So let's go back. Back to according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. How good is that? Light through the gospel. How well do we have the gospel? What is the gospel? And Paul would go on to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Until what day? What does that day mean? The end of his life or the return of Christ, the last day, the consummation of the age. Titus 2.11 For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all men. How awesome is that? Jesus Christ has come forth. He has appeared and he brings with him salvation to all men. So, let's come back, rewind a little bit to the beginning. This issue of a revealed righteousness. My salvation experience. One of the things I find that helps especially when ministering with other people and when they're going through difficulties or situations that are often outside their control. It's starting to ask the question about how do they get saved? We presume too quickly and too often around us, especially with family members and friends, 
that these people are actually saved. But we know the testimony and the trail in the wake of their life is, is measured by fruit. What's the fruit of their life? Are we making excuses for these people or are they just not saved? This is where we've got to begin. Judgment begins in the house of God. Judgment begins in my life. I have to look to my own life and go, my goodness, how saved am I? Have I received the revelation of Jesus Christ? <clears throat> am I born again? <clears throat> And this morning, I really felt as I was just waiting at home in preparation that it's probably a good time to just review our own lives. And, and if we haven't had a revelation of Jesus Christ or we're struggling with doubt and unbelief, it's a good time today to to open our mouths and go Jesus I'm not sure if you've revealed yourself to me I want a revelation by the spirit I don't want reason I don't want knowledge I don't want Christianese or Christian language we're not here teaching you Christian phraseology so you can get by we're not teaching you um, principles on how to live so you can muscle through life in your own strengths because you can we can teach proverbs proverbal wisdom is amazing the world employs it bookshelves and and management schools are filled with biblical wisdom but it doesn't bring salvation it doesn't bring revelation but there is a knowledge that that puffs up. There's a knowledge that strengthens. Even doesn't Paul say to Timothy, um, even a little exercise is good. Yeah, it, it, it bears a fruit. Knowledge. There's a knowledge. There's reason that makes you look good, feel good, even above your companions. You can know stuff. There is a power that comes with it. But where's that power source from? It's, it's from death. It's another tree. It's a deception. You had to be tempted into it, just the same as Eve. We look at Eve and go, I can't believe she'd be tempted. <laughs> You're tempted every day, and you fail those temptations. The same as Eve. I do, we all do. But we have one who wasn't tempted. Well, didn't, sorry, didn't fail the temptation, he was tempted, but he didn't fail. Jesus Christ. So this morning, can we just stand and pray and ask him to reveal himself to us? I believe there's a special grace this morning that there's going to be some people here awakened. Young people, old people, in between people. Me. <laughs> we all need the revelation of Jesus Christ. And this might be a scary prayer for you to pray. Because what if he comes? What if he does reveal himself? What if the Spirit shows you Jesus? That you haven't seen him before. Isaiah was a priest of God, but it wasn't until Isaiah chapter 6 that he really saw God high and lifted up, right? He respected and honored and had a fear of God, and, but there was a, a change that came about down the path, down the track, and it can happen for all of us. I was 29 years growing up in a Christian house before I really got saved, before I really got born again. Yet I'd heard thousands of hours of teaching being dragged through hundreds of churches and church meetings, <laughs> conferences, 
deliverance sessions, miracles, great teaching. But it took 29 years for it to finally get in, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this morning, let's just open our hearts. I want to lead us in prayer. And if you could just pray out of your own heart as well. Simple prayers from the depth of your heart. Father, as you see these, these ones before me today, standing before you, Lord. Lord, on this glorious day, Resurrection Sunday. Lord, that you would you would come and you would reveal yourself. We pray for a spirit of revelation to come now and and bypass reason and logic. Bypass every notion and idea about who you are that is ungodly. Every man-centered, well-meaning idea of the kingdom of God. Lord, would you come? Lord, you can see the heart standing in front of you. And those, Lord, that are genuinely asking that you would come and reveal yourself, Lord, would you come and visit them? Holy Spirit, come now, we pray. Yes. Holy Spirit of Revelation, would you come and would you, would you reveal the Son as only you can? Lord, that we would see you high and lifted up, that we would have the revelation of Jesus Christ in a once and for all way, Lord. Putting off the old man, putting off reason, putting off logic, putting off historical teaching and, and experiences, putting off the past, putting off denominational Christianity, putting off what I think I know, putting off what I've been taught, put enough by what I've been told by parents, friends, family. But looking to you, Holy Spirit of Revelation, would you come now and would you enter hearts and lives and minds, Lord? Would you reveal the Lord Jesus Christ as he is? Lord, I believe this is, this is foundational. Would you build the revelation of Jesus Christ? Would you come in? I pray for encounters as only you can bring, Lord. Lord, we repent of trying to build mental images of who you are. We repent of trying to force biblical truth and knowledge down people's throats apart from the revealed son Lord that you would reveal the son this morning Lord in hearts today Lord I pray from the youngest to the oldest Lord we all need to see Jesus we all need to see you high and lifted up we all need to see the son we all need to see the lamb Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We want to see Jesus today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you that it's an outside in, it's an external coming in, Lord. No part of man can reason and, and acquire revelation. It's a foolishness.
It comes by the Spirit. You bring this to babes. You bring this to those without understanding. Lord, wash us, forgive us, Lord, for trying to reason and figure this thing out. Trying to make sense, Lord. Would you, would you wash us, Lord, anew today? Wash us afresh. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Lord, wash our minds. Give us the mind of Christ. Give us the mind of the Lord in these things, Lord. May we have the same mind together, Lord. Or let it not be a Pareto thing and 20% of the people get it. <laughs> May we all get it. May we all come to the knowledge and the fullness and the maturity, Lord, that you have predestined. Thank you, Lord, that you will quicken whom you will. <laughs> Lord, you quicken whom you will. Lord, let that be today. May you quicken whom you will this day, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Can we all pray this prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, awesome. Well, anybody receive anything? Now's a good time to ask. <laughs> It's okay if you did. Might be later.